Welcome. Thank you for joining us on the empty side of the table. We are currently in the middle of a heat wave in my hometown. There's not a lot I can be functional within this kind of heat, considering my job and all that. We noticed that we had a pair of figures that we haven't really sat down and opened up or reviewed. So these are kind of old. But I figured while I had time on my hands, I might as well share it. So this first one is Trap Jaw from the Masters of the Universe Revelation series on Netflix, which I like quite a lot. And Trap Jaw is one of my favorite uh, figures from the original series. They didn't do too much with his character. He was just always kind of a lackey. But let's open him up and take a look. So I believe I've seen Stinkor from the series, but I haven't seen Merman yet. And we uh, already have Faker. So it says, Half mortal, half machine, the sinister cyborg Trapjaw made his name terrorizing Eternians, armed with an array of deadly devices that attached to his mechanical arm. The man with the metal jaw served Skeletor as an obedient weapon of destruction. With Skeletor gone, Trapjaw serves a new master. A new master now. Triclops of the technological cult worshipping Motherboard. Triclops being voiced by the amazing and intelligent Henry Rollins. Right. So it looks like he comes with the same uh, shroud and setup that Triclops came with, as far as uh, the tunic, I guess we call it, this thing here. I'm looking to see if there's any ties or anything on the back, and there isn't, so that makes it a lot easier to take out of the puppy. Oh, now he's got some on his feet, alright. And he's got him on his arms too. That's why that one's so difficult. I'm constantly impressed with the articulation of these figures. It's about time America did uh, something more. McFarlane started the high level of detail, but because of that high level detail, things weren't nearly poseable enough. And then the, uh, for that, the Star Wars figures were just garbage when it came to any kind of posability. The G.I. Joe figures were quite posable. And before that, the, the gigantic dolls that they had for them. With all the accessories and clothes and the combat gear and all that stuff. These are the accessories he comes with. 
He's got uh, two things to add to his mechanical arm. A hook and a claw. A belt, which I'm guessing goes with this thing here. Because he's got that really cool belt already. And an extra hand. So let's take a look at his first form. Let me see if I can get a little height on the camera. Oh cool, and even like the original toy, he's got uh, the hooks on his belt for storing the extra appendages, I guess, you could call them. Right, let's try it over here. There we go. Just got to kind of force him in. Now obviously, uh, I'm thinking that they might have done well to put the swivel on the tools with the extra appendages so that they're not uh, constantly facing one direction and making posing difficult or whatever. I like that he's got the joint in his arm here for his uh, gun or whatever. I do prefer the jaw to be up like this. I always like the idea of him having no lower jaw, so this was just a replacement of it. There's that uh, other human um, CGI show. I believe it's also on Netflix. And I don't like what they did with tra Trap Jaw on that one at all. They gave him like this weird gnarly vacuum mouth thing. And that's maybe just me being uh, particular about stuff or whatever, but... I know he doesn't need any weapons, but it might have been cool to have something in his hand, for his hand to hold there. Let's see. But look at that posability. That's amazing. Let's see if we're going to do this. Put on the hook. That was quite easy to remove, that was nice. This peg though, look at that, that's uh, it's kind of dinky. Could be a bit scary. I mean, that uh, looks like something that would snap off, break quite easily. <laughs> there we go. So there's this claw. Him and Faker might look good together. Because Faker's a robot, he's kind of half robot, I guess. Come on. There we go. Let's try the hook. I seem to remember in the mini comic. Or well, maybe it was the commercial. Either way, they had him uh, repelling with his hook, or maybe with the hole in his head here. I always thought that was kind of neat. There we go. Now he's a pirate. Okay, so I'm guessing his head is going to be removable to get that on that tunic. Come on, there we go. I'm going to leave the gun off for now. Let's take off the belt. That was nice and easy. Right, so the tunic's probably going to go on first. Not probably, it's obvious. Silly. Got this nice Velcro strip here. Let's slip his arms through. Cool, now he looks like a headless chef. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a Eternian type name for a headless chef. 
like spatula. Oh yeah, that's it. <laughs> you can give him a spatula here and, uh, instead of a hook or what have you. Oh, I'm sorry, the heat makes us uh, makes us a bit punchy. Spatula. <laughs> I kill me. All right. Then we've got this nice belt. If I was better with uh, customizing things, I would most definitely make a spatula to put on his arms and, uh, I don't know, do some kind of silly picture of photo series. Spatula's kitchen. Deadly kitchen. Um, kitchen of evil? I don't know. Where he makes uh, deadly snacks for Skeletal. Or forbidden snacks of uh, forbidden uh, uh, cuisine. There we go. Alright. Belt's a little off center now. Sorry. There we go. Now for the coup de gras. There we go. Now I don't know that he would have a uh, a laser while he's in his um I don't know what you want to call it worshiping garb. So let's give him the hook and. The other hand, because this hand looks like it's, uh, I don't know, I'd say it could be praying, but that's only one hand. There we go, look at that. That's amazing. I'm very impressed with this figure line, Mattel is, uh, really started to um, do more with their figures. The points of articulation are amazing. Look at that. There's two points of the knees, the legs open up, the kick forward, the side swivels. Quite nice. Now, I know, uh, well I just saw this show about people that collect video games the documentary and uh, they brought up the whole hoarder aspect of it aspect of things um, you know buying sealed games and never playing them or whatever and people saying games are meant to be played as well as toys being meant to be played with I do open these things up and uh, I'll take photos and set up funny things or whatever when I'm feeling creative or bored I find that keeping them in the package makes them much easier to store um, it's also harder to lose any accessories they might have and uh, keeps their form or shape you don't just pile a bunch of figures onto each other or throw them in a plastic bag or something like that and then um, if you're lucky enough to have room to display them all it's much easier to display them you don't have to constantly uh, go in there every month with a toothbrush to get out the dust or whatever And I just might come back with some uh, cool figures of things from Comic-Con. We'll see how that goes. I apologize, I can't stop talking about it. I'm quite excited for Comic-Con. The next figure we're going to be doing is will be for Swamp Thing. But this will be the end of this video. This has been uh, a kind of unboxing and review for Trapjaw in the Masters of the Universe Revelation figure series. Good stuff. Quite nice. Thank you so much. Stay healthy. Always be kind. Enjoy the season.